In this video, we will look at Roy's Safety First Criterion, which is an application of the normal distribution. So this will be applicable for investors who are focused on shortfall risk. Now, before we start, the assumption here is that returns are normally distributed. So from this graph, we have the mean return, mu, denoted as the expected return on the portfolio P, and then to the left, we have R sub L. This is the investor's minimum acceptable return. So anything below this minimum acceptable return, then the investor will feel uncomfortable. So this area shaded in blue here represents the shortfall risk, which is the probability that the portfolio return will be lower than the minimum acceptable return within that time horizon. And of course, the variable x here represents the return of the portfolio. So for the investor, how do they find that portfolio that has the lowest shortfall risk? So that portfolio is called the safety first optimal portfolio. And this portfolio maximizes Roy's safety first ratio, which we will denote as SFR. And the formula for Roy safety first ratio is the expected return on the portfolio minus the minimum acceptable return over the standard deviation of the portfolio or the volatility of the portfolio returns. Now, this portfolio, if it maximizes Roy safety first ratio, it also means that this portfolio will minimize the shortfall risk. Now, to see why there is this relationship, what we'll next look at here is we will transform this variable x into the standard normal random variable, which is denoted by z. So we will use the standard normal uh, z-score formula, where z is equals to x minus mean or the mean over the standard deviation. So in this case, x, okay, if we were to do it for this particular value, which is R sub L, the minimum acceptable return. So what we'll do is we will substitute, okay, the X as R sub L, and then mean will be the expected return on the portfolio. So what we'll get here is this formula upon substitution. Now, this formula, if you compare, is what we have here. Okay, so this is the value that we have here at this point upon transformation and the mean now becomes zero for the standard normal random variable. Now, if you look, if you compare this formula versus the safety first ratio, what difference do you see? Okay, the difference is in the numerator. And in this case, if I want to express, okay, so if I want to express this formula here in terms of safety first ratio, it will be equals to negative of the safety first ratio. So what we can observe here is that the larger the Roy safety first ratio, the larger it is, the larger the negative amount. And the larger the negative amount, the more it will be towards the left hand side. And the more it moves towards the left hand side, the smaller the shortfall risk. Okay, so for example, if the short if the safety first ratio becomes larger, then the safety first ratio will be somewhere around here and the uh, shortfall risk will then be lower as compared to the green shaded area. Now take note that uh, the area shaded green here is the same as the area shaded as blue. So if we can find this area shaded in green, okay, that is the shortfall risk or the probability that the portfolio return will fall below that minimum acceptable return. Now, before we move over to the example, uh, some of you may think or wonder that how does this safety first ratio compare to the sharp ratio? Because the formula looks quite alike. Okay, so safety first ratio and sharp ratio will only be the same if the investor's minimum acceptable return is equals to the risk-free rate of return. And of course, for the every investor, their minimum acceptable return will be unique and it will be different uh, among investors. Let's look at this example where I have three portfolios, portfolio A, B and C. Portfolio A has the lowest return and the lowest volatility uh, going up to portfolio C with the highest return and also the highest volatility. 
The investor's minimum acceptable return in this case is 3%. This is arbitrary. We are going to compute the safety first ratio and also calculate or compute the shortfall risk based on the statistical table okay, for the normal distribution. And then we will compare the results and then determine which portfolio is the safety first optimal portfolio. For portfolio A, the ROI safety first ratio will be 8% minus the minimum acceptable return, which is 3%, divided by 12%. Okay, so that would give us around 0.42. I round this to two decimal places just to fit the statistical table because in the statistical table that we will see in a short while, there's only two decimal places. Now for portfolio B, uh, that will be 12% minus 3 over 18. So that would give, uh, give us 0 0.5. And for portfolio C, that will be 15 minus 3 over 25. So that gives us about 0 0.48. Right now, based on the ROI safety first criterion, what we will do is to determine the safety first optimal portfolio, we will look for the portfolio with the uh, highest safety first ratio. In this case, that is portfolio B. Okay, it has the largest safety first ratio, 0 0.5. So we can also conclude that portfolio B will have the minimum shortfall risk. Now, just to compute the shortfall risk, just to get make it complete, we will now compare this to the statistical table. So here I have the, the normal distribution statistical table. And here, of course, is based on the cumulative probability. So whatever value that we see on the, from, on the combination of the row and the column is, uh, will give us the cumulative probability. Now, for example, in portfolio A, the Z value is, or the ROI safety first ratio is uh, 0 0.42. So if you look at uh, 0 0.42, 0 0.4 and 2, that gives us 0 0.6628. Now, if you compare back to this uh, diagram, okay, for portfolio A, the Z score, okay, so we'll use this for, this is already, we assume that this is already the standard normal random variable. Okay, and uh, here 0 0.42, okay, means that here we have negative 0 0.42. Remember, this is negative of the ROI safety first ratio. And since uh, the value in the statistical table gives us the cumulative probability, we are looking for the probability, okay, to the right of 0 0.42. Okay, so just to uh, repeat again, so the table that we saw earlier only has positive z values okay so we only saw 0 0.42 which is equals to 0 0.6628 okay so what we are interested in looking for here is the area shaded on the green which is the same as the area to the right of 0 0.42 so that is 1 minus 0 0.6628 okay which is 0 0.3372 Okay, and that is the same area here as well. So the shortfall risk for portfolio is A is 33.72%. Now, if you do it for portfolio B, uh, we're looking at 0 0.5. So for 0 0.5, uh, 0 0.5 and 0 here, so the cumulative probability is 0 0.6915. We'll take 1 minus 0 0.6915. Okay, so that gives us 0 0.3085. That's uh, 30. 85%. So on this normal distribution for portfolio B, this is negative 0.5. This is the Z score. And the shortfall risk here is 30.85%. Then for portfolio C, there's negative 0.48 here for the Z score. And let's check out the cumulative probability. So 0 0.48, that is uh, 0 0.6844. So 1 minus 0 0.6844, so that will be equal to 0 0.3156 or 31.56%. Alright, so we have the shortfall risk. You can now compare that among the three portfolios. And as you can see, portfolio B has the lowest shortfall risk among the three. Okay, and uh, the highest shortfall risk will be for portfolio A, that's 33.72%. So that concludes uh, the video for Roy's Safety First Criterion.